This is Coogan Cassius for Apple. Action. What? Action. Coogan Cassius, IFL TV, MCK Global. We're in New York City. Head of tomorrow night's triple header from the garden. Adam Booth. What's happening, mate? Not a lot. Just resting. Um, you only got in, what, last night? Yes. Are you kind of finishing off with Josh? Yes. Okay. I already knew that. Anyway. Uh, let's start by talking about Michael Cullen. Are you from over here? You see that the tops? Subtle, little, subtle little bit of blade, blatant advertising for Michael there. Just get your chest. Uh, available now? Apparently so. Apparently so. Uh, this was when he turned professional. The first kind of step, wasn't it? He wanted to get to this fight. Um, it was meant to happen last August. It didn't happen on Nikitin's part, but it is happening tomorrow night. So he wants to kind of put a closure on this whole Nikitin saga because it is the kind of thing that's been dragging around his career since the Olympics. Is that fair to say? Yeah, but my my opinion is that he shouldn't be thinking about that. It's just a fight against a fellow that's got a skill set that he's got to deal with, and that's what we have been doing in training. I understand this is theatre and that story makes a great story, right? Michael used that line where he said he wants to write a wrong that should never have been written. And that's good, but on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't talk about anything like that. We just talk about who he is, what he can do, and what Michael needs to do, whilst adding a lot of skill sets to his game. Um, he's an absolute joy to work with Michael, and he has added a lot to his fighting uh, toolbox. Just wait and see which ones he has to use tomorrow night. So you're saying kind of away from the the building up of a storyline, as you put it? I think, I, I think I've been involved in enough hype fights in my career and I realised that, that, that the hype really doesn't mean anything. It's all about the fight. You've got two fellas, ten rounds, and both of them have skill sets and it's who's the better at what they do. Right. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Um, cool. Skill set. Looks like Kevin Keegan. I'd love it. I'd love it if we beat them. Uh, sorry, can you just pick up from skill set? No, that was the end of it really. Oh, I right. actually tailed off the Oh, you did tail off. Okay, fair enough. Um, Bob Arum actually didn't know that the history between Conlon and Nikitin actually goes back before the last Olympics. It actually goes back to, I think, a European qualifier or something, where they've already fought and he's already beaten Conlon. Why would that be on, in Bob Arum's consciousness? No, he's Bob just... Didn't Bob Arum promote fights like Leonard Hearns? <laughs> no, I know, but... <laughs> Conlon and Nikita as teenagers at Bantamweight probably didn't signed, flick his radar. When top rank signed Michael, obviously they signed Nikitin as well with the view to kind of making this fight, which they're doing tomorrow night. But talking to Bobby Essie, he just didn't know that they'd already had a fight before that. I was just, yeah, I thought someone would have told Neither him. Neither had I. What, before when? Well, I was working with Michael before it came out that he'd boxed him before. Oh. Well, I didn't know until Bob told me, so. So why are you acting I'm like he's a big saying. surprise? Well, it was, I just didn't, I didn't know, I'm just saying. Um, how much, how different is it though from, I mean, I'm assuming you haven't seen that first fight, or have you? No. No. Okay, from the fight from the Olympics now, as professionals, Michael seems to have developed uh, a better pace than Nikita has. Okay. So how much of a well, difference? Well, Nikita, I mean, Nikita's style is what it is. You know, he, he, he can add things to his skill set, but the bottom line is, He's a very good, strong, come forward, mauler, swinger, whatever you want to call it. Now, that's a handful for anyone when they're that strong. Remember, he didn't have an amateur style, yet he was successful as an amateur with a style that was the completely opposite of what pretty much most amateurs are using. His style is suited to professional fighting rather than amateur boxing. And it's a 10 round fight, so we'll see if he can maintain the pace that he would set in, in three round fights, if he can maintain that intensity in a 10 round fight. Do you expect Michael to fight for a world title next year? 
I, you're not going to lure me into anything other than tomorrow night because I'm not going to curse it by being so lure. ignorant to lure. talk about future fights. Lure. Lure. I'm not trying to lure you into anything else. I'm just saying, do you expect him, if he comes through Saturday, to fight for we the world think about world championships. We only think about becoming world champion. So that's an obvious answer to yeah, but the only thing I'm thinking of is about tomorrow night. Dangerous, isn't it, talking about the fight after? Dangerous talking to people like you. Why? Because you start talking about the fights after. Why wouldn't I talk about the fights after? If Why you choose you? not to talk about them, that's just, up you to just you. Said it, you just said it was dangerous too. I'm just saying, I was saying it is, it is a little bit dangerous. Yeah, that's what, that's what, what, what you is people it? do, isn't it? What do you mean you people? You people. What? Define what you mean by you people. It, what, what do you do? How would you define what you do? I'll just talk bollocks on the camera. That, that, then that's what I mean. You didn't want to give me credit as a journalist, did you? Uh, oh, you're a journalist? No, I'm not a journalist. I'm just saying you didn't want to... I've never used your name and the word journalist in the same sentence, or the same paragraph, or even no. the same year. I, I like to think what I do is pretty unique. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. It is. Yeah. Can I just shut that door? Because, mate, you can talk to the people. If you want. We're actually friends, but... He's got no fucking better at what he does. Just, he's everyone's pal. I'm definitely going to watch that back. What did you say? Slag me off. Oh, you said talk to the camera, talk to the camera. Did you slag me off? I'd be massively disappointed if I watched this back and you've slagged me off. Why would you slag me off? Do you think I'm going to compliment you? You should do. Are you that naive? Mm, possibly not. It's all going off in here. Alright, gentlemen, this room closed off. Alright. Yeah. It's a, it's a meter room. I know. Excuse me? I know. Can we not use it for 10 minutes? No. I mean, that's the case I have to charge you. How much? Hmm? How much? Well, it's a lie. You know what? It's a lie it's a or a lot? It's a lot. We have, we have, a, lot. Up, we have a set up for a different group. That's all. What, tonight? Ask him how much. We, we have a set up for a group. It's a meter room. I'm setting up for a group. We, we are working in this room. We not, you're not allowed to be in here. See what you're You get me in trouble. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. Okay, just... Uh, people don't realise we're actually sat on the fucking floor. you got no clout, Coogan. I'm not taking that microphone off you. This is where it's come to. This is what it's come to. Sitting on the floor. You're not showing that we're sitting on the floor. Not, we're not even in the reception or the lobby. We're kind of at the bottom of half a step, half the stairs, next to a lift, because you got hustled out of the uh, media room. Well, technically, it's not the media room at like eight o'clock at night. And what was I supposed to do in that situation? Just explain to me what I was meant to do. What just carried on filming? I'm supposed to take charge, Coogan. Be authoritative. <laughs> you can't see, he's really upset. <laughs> I couldn't take charge. What am I meant to do? Can I know we're not moving? No, I don't want, let's not talk about him. Come on, what did you want to ask me? I want to talk about your new gym. Are you going to invite me down? January. This microphone thing is going to look really odd on camera. January. Stop it. Okay, January, so you're going to invite IFL down to have a little tour, a little cup of tea, a little walk through? Yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is, yeah, this will be easier. When I'm talking, I'll talk, but then when I'm giving the mic to you, I'm just going to let you hold it. Hold the mic. Do you want to interview for IFL, Sarah? <laughs> um, I wanted to get your thoughts on last weekend in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so I'll kind of ask you the questions and then you can take the mic over. That'll be a lot easier for this situation. I wish people could actually see us sitting down, cross-legged on the floor, but we'll see. What are you doing? I'm taking a picture so they can see you sitting like Hold a on. Little, little yogi. Adam, your thoughts on Anthony Joshua's performance? Did you feel as though Andy Ruiz was disappointing? And, yeah, your summary of the fight, basically. I thought, uh, I thought AJ was very good. Very disciplined, 
used the skill set he needed to to nullify a dangerous short fighter. Um, proved that mentally, going straight into a rematch, he could overcome the mental and emotional and psychological barriers that he would have encountered at some point, whether in training or in the fight, and pretty much boxed a shutout. I, I don't think I gave Ruiz a round, I possibly shared one, but I might even be making that up. Uh, Ruiz was disappointingly out of shape, and AJ exposed him. What AJ did the other week in Saudi is what he should have done here at Madison Square Garden in June. But he didn't, made the mistake, rectified it, and he's picked up the belt again. Thank you. Um, Ruiz came out afterwards and kind of gave a couple of excuses about why things may have not have gone his way, suggesting that he parted a lot of the time kind of after the fight. He did come in at over 280 pounds. Uh, what did you make of kind of his responses to why he lost the fight um, in the post-fight press conference? Well, it's a shame, but shame on him. And I feel sorry for his coach. But, you know, the window of opportunity as a, as a professional athlete, let alone as a professional fighter, to be successful, create a legacy and secure your future is a very small window of opportunity. And uh, he had his, and he's kind of thrown it away a little bit. And it's, a, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame on him because he is a good fighter. He's a very good fighter. But he blew it because he obviously lost his way as a man and a champion. And real champions maintain. They do it over a period of time. They have the discipline and the character. Anyone can, you know, a lot of fighters can pick up world title belts. But there's a difference bet between picking up a world title belt and actually being a genuine world champion. And to sort of give up the discipline, having won it, is a bit of a shame. AJ proved that he does have the mindset and the discipline to keep repeating and be a champion. And so he's picked his belts up. Kudos to him because he deserves them. And it's a shame that Andrew Ruiz doesn't. He got a lot of criticism after the fight, Anthony Joshua. Rob McCracken got a lot of criticism afterwards. They've pretty much just kind of gone back to basics, put their head down, gone there, boxed that game plan that they did, which was absolutely spot on, to bring the belts back. It wasn't the most spectacular of wins, but that was the only way you believed that Joshua was going to win that fight? I, I thought, and I said before, that his way to win that fight was to effectively be like a version of Vlad Klitschko. It's just to uh, box him long, tie him up and shut him down short. He exchanged with him a few times up close, but not many, didn't linger there, and just moved around him. And, and even Andy Ruiz said, oh, the way to beat me is to box me around a little bit. And that's exactly what he did. He boxed him around a little bit and won every round. Joshua's in a situation now where he's going to have mandatories called on him uh, with Kubrat Pulev and also um, Alexander Usek. If you were kind of going to map that situation out for Joshua, it seems though he will fight Pulev first and then we'll wait and see what happens with Usyk, But who's pulled, that, who's pulled that rabbit out of a hat? Pulev. I, I, don't, I, I haven't heard of Pulev having any significant wins recently. Who's he beaten recently? Well, he's the IBF mandatory for, for Joshua. Yes, absolutely. OK. I don't, based on what? What? I don't know what, based on what, but he was, um, his win over Huey Fury, he was uh, placed as mandatory. That was a, a final eliminator, wasn't oh, it, was to it? fight oh, Joshua, okay. yeah. I didn't, why didn't I see that fight? I didn't see that fight. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Educated me. Well done. Thank you. But yeah, that seems the, the more likely situation that he'll fight Pulev first and then Usyk's talking about possibly fighting Derek Chisora in February and then do they face each other later on in the year, Usyk and Joshua... That's yet to be seen, but how do you kind of see that going? How do I see what? Uh, Joshua and Pulev? Pulev. And uh, I think. How old's Pulev now? He's been, he's, he hasn't. He's, he's late 30s. Um, so as long as AJ is careful in the, first, in the early rounds, then I see him winning that. Whether he stops him or not, I don't know. Pulev is a tough dude. He's only been stopped once and that was by Klitschko is that right but I think AJ should win that he seems to have got a, a refocus to actually being a, a boxer and a fighter rather than a, 
an athlete and someone that trains, he looks like he has immersed himself into developing his skill sets. And I, I can imagine that that will continue now. And then uh, the next one is Usyk, did you say? Usyk's the other well, Usyk, well, Usyk uh, the WBO have a rule, don't they, that a champion moving up can take a manager position. Um, if I'm honest, I think AJ is too big for him. Um, Usyk's a masterful boxer, but he's not. A, he wasn't a big puncher as a cruiserweight, um, and I just think that AJ might be uh, a bit too big and a bit too strong for him. But it'll be interesting. I wasn't. I wasn't overly impressed with Usyk's first performance against um, Witherspoon. I didn't think that really made a statement moving up to the heavyweight division. But we'll see. Maybe. Maybe he'll evolve and develop but if you said this that fight to take place now i'd have to favor joshua thanks for your thoughts on the heavyweight scene did you watch the rest of the card were you impressed by anyone else uh, see the draw between hunt and povetkin hergovich looked good i didn't watch any of it i only watched the aj fight any reason for that no i just wasn't in oh. where were you training probably what, on a Saturday night? No, mate. Honestly, I don't know. All I know is I wasn't in. I was travelling into London. That's what I was doing. Fair play, fair play. Um, after this, you'll be travelling out to Phoenix, Arizona, for Pretty Boy Kelly. Um, I don't even know who Josh is fighting. Is that opponent out there? Uh, I'm just waiting for that to be confirmed, so I won't curse it now, but I think I know. I'm just waiting for the confirmation. I know you don't like talking about the fight after, but I will ask you, Evan Yeshin, uh got a good knockout the other day, and are we still obviously led to believe that, from what Eddie Hearn tweeted, that Josh comes through next week, that fight is on? Yes, there's uh, the condition of VADA testing, and as long as VADA testing is agreed to for a period of time leading up to the fight, then yeah, that fight will happen. So has VADA testing been agreed now? You need to ask Eddie that because I'm not responsible for signing Avanessian into the contract. I know that we've agreed to the VADA testing and he hasn't told me that Avanessian has agreed to it, but the fight is contingent on that. Where is that fight likely to take place? Well, you want me to tell you what Eddie's told me? In England. In Newcastle. I'm not saying where. I'm not saying where. I'll let, I'll let him be the promoter and tell you that when he's good and ready. Fair enough. I'm just trying to run through your other fighters. You've got Shannon Courtney out in action next Thursday on the Next Gen Show at York Hall. Yes. And then Joe Joyce fighting Marco Hook for the European heavyweight title in, on January 11th. The heavyweight that conveniently no one wants to mention. But no one wants to fight. Who's turned down fights for Joe Joyce? You need to ask the heavyweights that have been offered the fights. I don't know who's been offered, that's what I'm, I'm asking not, you. I'm not naming and shaming anyone. I'm not naming and shaming anyone. But if you ask, if you ask a lot of the heavyweights out there, there's not many of them that want to fight him and they don't want to talk about him. What's that show called? The Battle of Brexit? I don't know why. I'm not a promoter. and I, If I was, I wouldn't have called it that. Who did you vote for? I didn't vote. Because you've been here. I was, a, I was on a plane. Who would you vote for? I've been here, so I didn't vote. Okay. Who would you have voted for? Uh, I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. Why don't you sh don't shove the microphone in my face with no questions, yeah. sir? <laughs> oh, God. This reminds me of the time when we sat in a bath and did an interview. Do you remember that? Vegas. Vegas. Five years ago. When Andy Five Lee fought ago. Matt Korobov. Five years ago today, Andy Lee beat Matt Korobov for the WO title. Five years ago today. Is that why you wanted a set like this? Because you couldn't find a bathtub? I paid that dude to kick us out of the room just so we could have a little moment. That was the same weekend that Amir Khan fought De Devon Alexander. And yeah, Andy Lee won the world title. Um, and then Matt Korobov was fighting Chris Eubank last week. And yeah, unfortunately. Did you watch that fight? I heard, I heard he dislocated his shoulder. So it's sport, it can happen. 
shame. Good fighter, a nice fella as well. It's a shame that that happened, but I hope he, uh, I hope he recovers and he can get back to that level of competition. Are you not interested in working with uh, another heavyweight? I know you've got Joe, but is that kind of your heavyweight now that you're working with? you want to sign anyone else? Nope. Yes, no. Yes, he is. And no, I don't. Unless you, well, unless you actually want to enter into this long, muted, white collar fight that you've flirted with the idea of. Do you know what? Looking at all this kind of KSI Logan Paul stuff, and obviously I'm as big time as them, <laughs> <laughs> not. Uh, but yeah, if I was to fight, someone did ask me, they said, who would you get to train you? I said, if I could convince him to do it, that's how I said it, it would be you. So you've done an, you've created an interview about a hypothetical situation that's not going to happen just so you could be asked questions like that? No, I'll tell you where it come from. Sky Bet had me at 12 to 1 to be KSI's next opponent. What, since his last thing that he just did? <laughs> really? True story. Sky Bet had me at 12 to 1. I remember when you were just a little tadpole in this business. I still am. But what I was going to say was, so people then started saying, would you fight him? Like my friends who were like casual boxing fans were going, this is what they're doing. And ring me up going, why don't you do it? <laughs> you got friends? Yeah, I've got friends. Of course, yeah, I've got friends. I've got six. So they were saying like, who would you get to train you? And I was going. Your usage of microphone is terrible. No, I don't like this microphone thing. I don't. It doesn't work for me anymore. You're not good at it either. You're totally out of time. Pulling it, pushing it, pulling it. Bit of a pull and a push. Because you give awkward silences, that's why. Like now, like now, you should, you should be talking. That wasn't a question. It wasn't really something I want to talk about. So, ne next question. Can, no, I need, to, I need to talk into the microphone. Sorry. So, yeah, people were like, who would you get to train you? And I'm like, oh, Adam. But I do think you'd... Do you know what? The reason probably I wouldn't, because I don't think it would be financially beneficial to me to, to have you. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be financially beneficial. Well, you think I charge too much? Is that what you're implying? I'm not implying that. I'm saying you pay for what you get. So if I was paying for it, then obviously I'd, I'd, be, I'd be winning. So but this is all based on this hypothetical fight that's never going to happen. But weren't you supposed to fight... What's his name? Blonde haired dude from what's that program? The auction program. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You have if you're talking about Heavy D, I was meant to fight Heavy D. No, that fight was never, it was just a lot of noise coming from that side. Would you train and have a white, white collar boxing fight for charity? At some point in my life, I will do this, yes. A bit more commitment, please, Coogan. I'm one of these kind of fighters that needs a date and an opponent. <laughs> it's such a villain. <laughs> I need to know who I'm fighting. I need to know where it is. I need to know all these things oh, to, for me to really get in the zone. So if, you're, <laughs> so if you're told who it is and when it is, you'll do it. I have to consider it. I'm not just going to go, yeah, I'll fight every day or I'll fight Phil or John or you've got, Jeff. You've got a nemesis in your industry. Have you got a nemesis? Yeah, the guy from Boxing Social. I'd fight him in a second. Who's that? He must have interviewed you before, Rob Tebbett. Was he about eight stone or something? No, he weighs heavier than me. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. Why do you want to fight Rob Tebbett? I don't know, just because you asked me. Like him? No, we get on really well. But you really want to fight him? Oh, because people don't do that, do they? No, 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 no. But you, you just implied that you'd really want to fight him. Yeah, I do want to fight him, so I'd have a fight of him. But I don't really hate anyone in boxing that's kind of of my level of fighting to have a problem with. Hang on. Say that again. I don't dislike anyone at my level of fighting. Does that make sense? I don't think I'm really wording it right. So, I'm not going to start calling out professional boxers and trainers and whatever just because I don't like them. I wasn't saying that. Yeah. All right, come on, let's move on. It's getting late. Um, it's nearly Christmas. You know what that time of year is. You ready? 
For what? Let's just end it on a nice carol. Yeah? I'll tell you what. Let's put the camera on you. Yeah. Then we'll sing a Christmas carol. Fair enough. I'll, I'll move You're up. We'll sing a Christmas carol. No, we'll both sing it. No, I'm singing. No, why do I need to go in the shop then? We both sing a Christmas carol. Like together. Okay. Alright, what one? Good idea. Can you hit the Mariah Carey note? Where's my phone? Shall I get, shall I get sorry, the sorry, 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 sorry. Come back or you're not getting your phone back? You're not come back and sing. What are you doing? <laughs> Help! 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 Security! Security! Merry Christmas! Everybody's having fun! To, to the future now it